Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. It's been a while since I've last covered the format, but in recent expansions we got a bunch more red-green legends to add to our Bard class deck, and this is one of my favorite cards when it gets to go off. This 2-mana class enchantment says legendary creatures we control enter the battlefield with an additional plus or plus rank out on them, and if we pay an extra red-green mana to level it up, it says legendary spells we cast cost a red and a green less to cast. This effect only reduces the amount of colored mana, so the plan is to play a turn to Bard class, turn 3, level it up, and then we can immediately follow that up with a bunch of under-costed legends, often casting them for free, as we can see from all these 2-mana legends. And while the Veldrain also introduced a few more cards, at 2-mana there's Ruby Daring Tracker, a 1-2 legend with haste, and says when it attacks, if we control a creature with power 4 or greater, Ruby gets plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, and it also taps for a red or green mana. So if we've played for free after playing a Bard class on level 2, then we get to still tap it for mana and then follow it up with additional 3 or 4 drops even, so that can also lead to some explosive starts. Then we also have two copies of Agatha, which says activated abilities of creatures we control cost X less to activate, where X is Agatha's power. And then for 6 mana, other creatures we control get plus on plus 1 and gain trample and haste until end of turn. It's never actually gonna cost 6 mana, since Agatha by default has 1 power, discounting it down to 5, but with a Bard class, Agatha will enter with a plus on plus 1 counter, so that's already a 2 mana discount, and there's even more ways to increase Agatha's power, if we have multiple copies of Bard class, if we have Domri giving our team one extra power, and there's also the partners which can put potentially 3 counters on Agatha with a Bard class out, so that can discount it down to just a red and a green to give the team plus one plus one, trample and haste, so if we manage to ever combo off with the final level of Bard class, where we get to chain together a bunch of cheap legendary creatures, then Agatha is potentially a way to give the entire team a trample and haste to just win the game on the spot. Agatha also also synergizes with a few other activated abilities, such as Targnar, which can uh, double its power and toughness until end of turn. We also have Migloss with various activated abilities, another recent addition can gain Vigilance and Menace until end of turn, which we can then activate for free with Agatha out. We can also remove two oil counters to give it plus two plus two until end of turn, that we can also activate for free if Agatha had a plus one counter on it. And then finally we can also remove three oil counters by paying three mana to destroy an artifact or enchantment, so all very useful abilities. And then we also have one copy of Arada, which also has a six mana activated ability, giving it plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of lanes we control, so that also benefits from Agatha. And then additional 2 drops include Galia, which is a 2-2 with haste, and whenever we attack with 3 or more creatures, we may discard a card at random if we do draw 2 cards, so that can also be a nice way to refuel, especially useful if we have a legendary creature in hand that we already have in play, so we still get to make use of that extra card. Then there's a bodyguard, which can be sacrificed to give our legendary creatures one extra power and indestructible until end of turn, also very useful to protect our more important creatures. We've got Ruby, and then a three copies of Targnar, which has pack tactics. Whenever Targnar attacks, if we attack with creatures with total power six or greater this combat, attacking creatures get one extra power until end of turn, and then we can combine that extra power boost with the activated ability to double power and toughness to turn Targnar into a lethal threat. And then at 3 mana we have 3 copies of Samut, a 2-3 with first strike, vigilance and haste, saying whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, if that creature entered the battlefield this turn we get to draw a card. So Samut itself having haste if it connects gets to draw a card, but it also works very nicely with our other haste creatures, such as Ruby, Galia, and then partners giving other creatures haste also works very nicely with Samut. Then we've got our 1 copy of Rada, which lets us play a lands off the top of our deck, then a Migloss, as we mentioned. Clothis as a one-off can also be nice as a bit of a graveyard hate, and we can also pretty easily get enough devotion so that Clothis becomes a 4-5 indestructible god. Then we've got Domri giving us extra mana, so if we play it for one mana after discounting it with Bard class, it essentially pays for itself, so we can play another 3-drop afterwards, and we can also use the minus 2 to fight opposing creatures, giving us a bit of removal. And then a 3 copies of Burgi, which can also be played as Horn of Bounty for 5 mana. This one only gets a 1 mana discount from Bard class, since it doesn't have any green mana in its mana cost, but still very useful, especially when we ever want to go off with the final level of Bard class, where we get to chain together additional legendary spells off the top of our deck, then now whenever we cast a spell we get to add extra red mana to our mana pool, and since we get a red-green discount on all our spells, it doesn't matter that we don't have any green mana floating, as long as we have one green that's enough to eventually activate Agatha and give the entire team a trample and haste. And then Horn of Bounty can also be nice in the grind 
find their matchups, or if we already have a Burgi in play, can discard a card from hand to exile the top two cards of our library that we get to play this turn. It's also very effective with a discount from Bard class. And then another card that's quite effective in this deck is Mox Amber, letting us tap it for one man of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers we control. So that can also lead to some very explosive turns, especially combined with Bard class, where we get to immediately empty our hand after leveling it up. And then the partners are also great with our Bard class, as it will pick up an extra plus one plus one counter and now distributes three plus one counters to one of our creatures, as well as giving it haste until end of turn. And that will also give us additional card advantage with Samut potentially. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward, 20 lands total, so relatively a low land count. We've got plenty of dual lands for mana fixing, as well as the channel lands, which get a discount from our legendaries, so we can activate these for just a single mana most of the time. And Crucible especially can be quite nice, making a pair of 1-1 tokens that get to attack, maybe getting pumped by Targnar or, or other effects like Domri, giving them one extra power. And then we also get to play with Jagatha as our companion, and this is actually quite relevant as a legendary creature, gets a discount from our Bard class, so we can play it for 4 mana, and can potentially be a way to kickstart our level 3 Bard class if we're empty-handed and just need any legendary to start going off. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, no Bard class, but we have a Mox Amber, which can hopefully make up for it. I'll hang on to the Mox for now. Opponent also playing with Gigantha's companion and a tapped hazard. For now, play Galia. And then hope it survives so we can use Mox Amber to play a 3 drop. Okay, I see, so it's a heroic deck. Keeping up one red mana, and there's Bard class. Okay, so now probably just play Bard class and pass. Could have gone for Samut, but if our opponent has a pump spell here, we could run into a bit of trouble. Opponent does have a Reckless Rage, so now Mox Amber will no longer produce mana for us. Which could be relevant if we don't draw another 2 mana creature or a land. Arcanist to get back, Reckless Rage is also annoying. We did find a land. So now I can play a 3 mana Legends and then thanks to Mox Amber still play another one. So we'll try that. Go for Samut and then Domri. And I can at least force the opponent to use a protection spell here to save Dreadhorde Arcanist. Could start by just attacking. What's the worst that could happen? Opponent has like a plus three power pump spell. If I go for the fight and the Reckless Rage in response, that would be worse, I guess. So let's just attack and see if we get to draw. We do. And I can still play a free Targnar. And then, yeah, I guess we'll go for a fight. Unlikely to work, I'm sure opponent's got a God's Willing in hand. Nope, they don't. That's good. So next turn with Domri we can make a mana and get our Bard class to level 3. Or we can just dump out the rest of our hand. Virtuoso is still pretty scary, but no attack. So interesting spot here. Getting a level 3 Bard class going is certainly tempting. Could also just go for Burgi plus Partners, make a mana. And then a hasty Burgi can also draw thanks to Samut. That's probably still better here. We would be applying a lot of pressure. And then I could still put Gigantha in hand at the very least. The mana from Burgi doesn't go away until end of turn. So I think step one is probably to go to attackers. 
and send in the team. Hoplite could potentially soak up an attack if they have an instant. Defiant Strike on Virtuoso. So that could eat Targnar for free here if they discard a non-land card. But then they would still have to jump with the Hoplite. Okay. And then since we didn't get to draw, I'll just go for Gigantha. <laughs> two two double striking virtuoso could certainly kill us from this spot with four mana. God's willing gives it protection. And then there's the plus four plus O oh, rampage pump spell. And then add a few knife counters. And you can quickly get up to 18. Virtuoso attacks. Well, if I take it and they have enough pump spells to kill me, that's no good, so I might as well double block at that point. Both of my creatures have first strike. So whatever beats my two creatures would have killed me. I suppose we could have just jumped with one creature instead. Bonan does have trample here. But we still have lethal with Burgi next turn if they don't play a blocker. So worst case scenario would be like God's Willing plus another creature. But it looks like the trade happened. And as the dust settles, we still have a lethal bird game play. Can play Gigantha next turn or level up Bard class. And we have another fight available with Domri. So a blocker without a pump spell here is not going to be enough. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a nice hand. We've got our Bard class. Hopefully we can keep it in play. And then we've got a bunch of free creatures to play on turn 3. Turn 1 Vessel, so potentially a Grease Fang deck. Opponent can sacrifice Vessel at any point. But we've got a nice turn coming up here. Level of Bard class. And then just gonna dump out my hand. And then next turn Galia could also draw a few more cards. Worst case scenario, opponent mills over Parhelion, plays Grease Fang next turn. Can we dodge the vehicle here? Well, they found one vehicle in Esika's Chariots, so not as bad as Parhelion, but still very good here. Grease Fang into Chariots. Now we could trade for Chariot, but then they would just bring it back with Grease Fang. So better to let them attack and take the hit. And our opponent's got three cans back on defense. So we're going to have to go over the top, probably with a level 3 Bard class. But in the meantime, we're also under quite a bit of pressure. Just a land to draw. So, yeah, for now, can play Burgi. Could also play Horn of Bounty. And then go digging. And then rely on that as our card draw engine instead. I don't think it's quite as good as getting Bard class going. And if we get Bard class going, Burgi can also generate more mana. So, a few ways we can go about it here. Now I can also attack and then Targnar pumps Galia. So that's another reason to... Empty my hand first. Could also channel Crucible for one mana. Yeah, that might be the play. And then let's see here. Whenever we attack, discard a card at random. If we do draw two cards, I'll keep the land in hand. Attack with all. Targnar will pump the team. 
so we can attack into the cats. Okay, we've got a replacement Targonar. I guess how we can play for free. If I sacrifice Bodyguard, we would get 12 damage total here, so only a couple points short. So let the trade happen. Bone falls to four. And then play Agatha. And do I play Targnar to keep it on defense? I don't think that really matters. So I'll just pass. Could have also kept Agatha as a ritual effect to make one mana to maybe get to a level 3 bard class and then play Targnar to start drawing. Opponent has a Rafine's Informant. Do they have a Parhelion to discard? Or is it going to be Chariot once again? Agatha also makes it easier to activate Targnar. And yep, opponent's had a Parhelion, so that can fly over, hit us for 13, so it's not quite lethal. So then our opponent's going to have three creatures back on defense. So yeah, I think we still get there with Targnar pumping the team. And a partner so is going to make that even easier. So can pump Targnar after getting the bonus. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Beating Greasefang with turn 3 Greasefang into Chariot, turn 4 Greasefang into Parhelion. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw without a Bard class. No Ruby or Mox Amber for extra mana. So this hand feels a bit too slow and fair. Okay, this is a keep. And then we can let go of a land. Since we have a Mox Amber instead. Turn one Swamp, and a Thought Seize. Well, that's gonna take our Bard class. So now our hand's not quite as exciting anymore. Bard class down. And uh, sure, they can see my stomping ground. Opponent with a Warlock class. Could be a Black Devotion deck. Fatal push Targnar. And they can level up Warlock class. And there we see Grey Merchant go to the graveyard. Okay, I'll just go for Domri here. Less likely to die to removal. And then next turn we can see about playing Miglos. Megloss can destroy the Phyrexian Arena. And I guess Agatha makes it easier to activate the ability as well. We'll also get pumped by Domri, so essentially gives us a 2 mana discount on abilities. Which means we can play Agatha, play Megloss, and still activate to destroy an enchantment. Not bad. Liliana's next. No more distractions. So probably have to get rid of Agatha. <laughs> Off you go. And then have to take out Liliana while we can. Could keep a land in hand in case of a second Liliana making us discard, although they would likely just make us sacrifice Miglaws anyway. And then no point in activating anything here. Sorry, I'm not interested in dying today. Shieldreds, okay. We could fight it with Jigantha. 
Bodyguard also an option. So let's say we just add mana with Domri, then I could play Gigantha and play Bodyguard, attack, and then have Bodyguards back on defense as well to make Gigantha indestructible. And then next turn we can see about fighting. Opponent does get to activate Castle to gain some life as well. A Grey Merchant would hurt. Opponent's going to level up Warlock class. Don't have enough oil counters left to destroy the enchantment. Take or draw. Galia's nice. Although I don't have any cards left to discard with the ability. But now what we can do is play Galia. Sacrifice Bodyguard, making our team indestructible, getting one extra power, and then fight. And then I think it's time to pump Miglos. And then we might have enough for lethal here. Points at 15. This is more than enough. Alright, so despite the turn 1 Thoughtseize taking Bard class, we still got there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is not amazing. We have a Mox Amber to speed things up a little bit. But um, yeah, still not super excited about this. This is better. Missing red mana. But gonna have a little bit of faith here. And then what to get rid of? Is it the second Bard class? Probably. Just hope they don't have a Thoughtseize. Opponent on red aggro. Alright, just everything for a red source here. A light of the stage. Finds Lightning Strike, Wizard's Lightning. Swiss Spear, luckily not a wizard. And we found our red mana. So we're still in the game. And next turn should be pretty sweet. Can play two free two drops. Domri makes a mana, so it pays for itself. Play Samut and potentially draw two cards. We're down to 13, another light up. So we're gonna be at 10 here. Two lands in exile. And a Mox Amber. All right, so... Step one, Ruby. Play Galia. I could keep a land in hand and then just attack with three haste creatures, which also triggers Galia. Attack all out. We get to draw two with Galia's ability, and then we get to draw three more from Samut. So we're definitely going off here. Did end up drawing a few redundant creatures here, as it turns out, but our opponent doesn't know it and concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with double Bard class, so I'm keeping. Don't actually have any two drops to play right away, but if we draw lands, I can at least play a Samut. Opponent on a red-white heroic. Okay, can be a very scary matchup, but they won't have any enchantment removal. Our hand is rather on the slow side here. I'm really hoping for a land so we can try and connect with Samut. The new Monstrous Rage has been used by heroic decks nowadays. And we did find a land, okay. So level of Bard class, play Samut. We are already down to 11. But at least Samut has Vigilance. And we've got our next land ready to go. Still dies to a Reckless Rage. Next turn we could go Burgi plus Partners. Still have a mana left over. And a Legionnaire is next. 
Okay, so now we've got to think about what pump spells our opponent could have. So let's say I block Swift Spear and our opponent has, let's say, a Defiant Strike. It goes up to 3 power total, so that's not too bad. Another Monstrous Rage would be bad if we block Swift Spear. So I think Swift Spear is the only creature we can somewhat safely block without necessarily losing Samut. But they had another Monstrous Rage. Alright, so now we lose Samut. Find another one, if that helps. So start with Burgi. Play Partners. Play Samut. And then I have to ask myself if I can afford to attack with Burgi. Since we have another one, I guess I won't have the mana to play it here. But getting to draw an extra card is tempting. Or we can just bump Samut and attack for 6 and have 3 creatures back on defense, that's probably necessary. And hope to draw something else we can cast here. A land. Okay, so not a bad turn, but we might still be dead to a God's Willing on the red Virtuoso. And Hoplite, alright, so just a bunch of creatures, opponents out of pump spells. And bodyguards, not bad. So now I can get Bard class to level 3, play a free bodyguard and potentially string together more free spells. Finding a Mox Amber would be awesome. Yeah, there we go. Mox Amber plus Galia. And Burgi makes it easier to cast more of our spells. Alright, I think we're in the clear now. Got some removal here with Domri. Could also consider playing another Bard class, although now I'll just play the one from Exile. Play Galia. So that enters with an extra counter now. Miglos. I've already played land, so can play bodyguard to keep going. Although I might want to sacrifice this one first to pump the team. Find another Domri, and Ruby is also very nice. So finding an Agatha here would be able to potentially give the entire team haste, so that's the goal. But yeah, our deck is completely going off now. Can play another Partners, which is now going to be a little bit bigger thanks to the second Bard class. Could have also considered uh, playing a third Bard class here. I'll keep the Partners that can actually attack. And alright, our opponent has seen enough. We were just digging towards Agatha to give the entire team haste, but we could likely force a bunch of chum blocks and then draw a few more cards in the process. Could also play Horn of Bounty to keep digging. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we have our namesake card in hand, so definitely gotta keep. Just hoping to dodge a Thought Seize here. It's gonna be a tap to Blood Crypt, so we're in the clear. Play Bard class, and yeah, a land would be ideal next turn, letting us play Galia plus maybe Samut. And we got our wish. And if these connect, we could uh, draw two cards. But looks like they've got a Fatal Push at least. Still get to draw one card then, and a replacement Galia. Um, I think I'll hold it. The only reason to play it is if our opponent had removal for Bard class, but in red-black that's not super common. Alright, I guess Shieldred's Edict was another reason. That's okay. We can get on the board pretty quickly now. With, let's say, Domri making a mana that pays for itself.
And then I could play Partners plus Clothis plus Gallia. That looks good. Opponent might have another fatal push for Gallia here. So I'll target Clothis and smash. And there's a second Fatal Push. Still enough Devotion to keep Clothus around. Opponent falls to 8. And the Shieldred would not look all that impressive on this board. Can just fight with her indestructible Clothus to clear a path. And let's see here. I guess we go for one of their spells. Opponent falls to 6. With Moxamber, I could level up Bard class. Or we could just play Rada and likely kill the opponents. That's probably good enough. And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with double bar class, so even when facing a single Thoughtseize here, we should still be okay. Hang on to Mox Amber. And there's Thoughtseize, so they won't be able to take Bard class. Since we have a backup, takes Mox Amber instead. Pretty happy with that. And the third bar class. Okay, that's a bit overkill. And then if her opponent's keeping up removal, I don't really want them to kill Samut since I would like to draw a card with it. So maybe start with Rada. Reason to hold Rada is that we could potentially play Land of the Top right away to get immediate value. And there is a land on top. Domri coming up next. Okay, so play Samut's attack, can put Gigantha in hand, or play another Bard class. Which, I guess if we wanted to do that, I should have played it first to get an extra plus one counter. But this seems to work. And draw Domri. Can play it. And then add a mana, and still put Gigantha in hand. And then next turn I could level up Bard class to level 3, or we can just play Partners, we'll see. Shieldred does not really look all that scary. So, what's the plan? We can play Partners, and at this point I guess play another Bard class. We have access to 6 mana total with Domri. So I could even double Bard class plus Partners, or Partners plus Gigantha. And then if we give Gigantha haste attack with everyone, our opponents wouldn't be able to block Samut. So that looks good. Could also just kill Shieldred. So there's a lot of ways we can go about it here. Their opponent is going to chump Gigantha, take 9. And good luck to them. Okay, Invoke Despair actually gets rid of our enchantment. But uh, the damage has been done. Even killing 3 permanents here with Invoke is still not good enough. Alright, we get our turn back, and no need to play Burgi. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a very nice hand. If we can keep our Bard class, we could be looking at Agatha plus Samut in the same turn. And up against the red aggro, so don't expect any real disruption other than burn spells. They don't need to see Mox Amber yet. 
Turn to Swiss Peer. Could be playing standard so far. That one's not in standard. Okay, so just going for Bard class here. We are on the draw, opponent with a good start, so could definitely still be in trouble. Hoping to find more 2-drops we can play for free next turn to get on the board quickly. As we fall to 12. And another Soulscar Mage. A Lava Runner. Opponents light on burn spells, perhaps. Okay, so always good to play Mox Amber before playing our legendary creature. Because if our opponent kills it before we play Mox Amber, then it's not going to generate any mana. Play Copperline Gorge while we can. And then we could play Partners here instead of Samut. Although Samut is tempting since it could attack and potentially draws another card. It also has Vigilance, it plays defense well. Alright, we get to draw. And just a land. Alright, let's see. If our opponent's got a burn spell, we're probably dead. Wizard Sliding plus Cure the Critics. Alright, that should be more than enough. Can eat two creatures and still take a million damage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we're missing Bard class, but between Ruby and Mox Amber, I think we still have a Keeper. Finding another 2-drop would be nice. Opponent's got the Thoughtseize, so Bard class would not have worked anyway. Probably takes Ruby. And then, yeah, we need to find another cheap creature. Or a Bard class. Ruby down, and there's a Bard class off the top. Take that, Thoughtseize. Now do I play Mox Amber? I think I do. Can use the extra mana if I don't draw land. Put on black and green, so they could have some enchantment removal here. And yeah, Wither Bloom Command, ouch. Is their opponent actually a Grease Fang deck? As it turns out, can't catch any breaks. So we'll go with Burgi. Opponent did mill Parhelion, so if they have Grease Fang, then they just had the absolute nut draw. It's going to be another Wither Bloom command, this time destroying Mox Amber. And a Boseju can deal with our next Bard class. The rest takes Domri. Alright, Samut it is. We get to draw a card at least. And then next turn, Partners isn't bad. Salvage digging for Grease Fang, still hasn't found it. Point is at 9 for Mulch, and there's Grease Fang. Okay, so next turn, opponent likely has can stay away in hand or can flash one back. Best I can do, Miglos wouldn't leave me enough mana to destroy any artifacts or enchantments. So Partners deals the most immediate damage, and then also can give Miglaw's Haste next turn. Although that might be too late. And then I guess Pump Samut. Your opponent's at 2. We're about to take 13. And then face two angels on defense, so we should have enough to kill them with Miglos. Well, this was quite the game. I guess our opponent goes for Chariot instead. And just keep Grease Fang back on defense, that's fine. So yeah, play Miglos, and then I'll be able to give it Vigilance and Menace, as well as Haste. And that should be enough here. Attack all out. At least one creature goes through. 
And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a Bard class and a Mox Amber. So sign me up. Just gotta dodge a one mana discard spell. Planes we don't mind, and a bodyguard, so a mono white aggro. Okay. I will play Mox Amber now in case Thalia shows up. And then next turn we get to pretty much empty our hand. Ruby makes one extra mana. So that plus Mox Amber plays partners. Play Galia, play Targnar. And another Bard class. Could also wait to play Targnar until I play another Bard class. Although I could also end up discarding it to Galia's ability. So I think we still jam. And then we even get to enable pack tactics. Not a bad turn three. And then next turn, if uh, Galia tanks with three creatures, we get to discard draw two. Does our opponent have a Brutal Cathar for partners? They do. But the damage has been done. And a Migloss we can still play before attacking. So we discard Bard class and likely find something better. And then Ruby also gets pumped. Find backup Ruby Boseju. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. Alright, so we got to see our red-green Bard class deck in action. And definitely a very impressive deck whenever you do get to combo off with your Bard class. It is a deck that relies quite heavily on one playset of four cards. So if you don't draw the Bard class, the deck doesn't look all that exciting. There are still hands that can work out, especially with Ruby and Mox Amber giving you a small mana boost. But eventually it's still going to be Bard class that determines whether you win or lose. So that does make the deck pretty vulnerable to hand disruption, counter spells, or enchantment removal. So overall, the deck's not going to be one of those consistent top tier decks, but it does have top tier draws, so it's definitely exciting whenever you get one of those. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.